everybody. Here to give you guys the review for Married to Madison Season 5, Episode 2, titled Hot Off the Press. So I want to let you know this is going to be a multiple upload day. So today is the day that I'm going to go ahead and get caught up on Married to Madison, uh, Housewives, and Love and Hip Hop. So I'm actually going to watch it and record it, but I'm probably not going to upload it immediately. Uh, I might. I don't know. We'll see. But y'all can get a play through a video today. Got to make a flaw sign. Um, since everybody else has done their reviews, I'm going to try. Well, one, if I like, I'm trying to bypass insignificant shit. Try my best, <laughs> but still try to give y'all a review of my opinion. So we have Doctor and, and Doctor. We have Doctor Jackie and Doctor Heavenly. I'm just gonna sit here and just say their regular names. <clears throat> Not put doctor on it, no disrespect though. So, uh, they talk about coping skills. Jackie thing is she uses quiet time, prayer, and journaling. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, Heavenly poses the question: Is it possible that because you don't show emotion, that um, <clears throat> Curtis feel that you didn't care? And she pretty much told her, which I was thinking it right when the question was asked, but they've been together for 17 years. That being said, he knows her. So, like I said, that's kind of out of the question, you know, and though I can appreciate some of the talks going on, I don't like the fact that a lot of these talks happen on camera only because we don't know if they're going to be done by the end of the season, but there is a reunion, which we don't want is for all these conversations that should happen in private where Curtis can hear and be able to throw some of this shit back at her because your friends had already said it. He just take it and repackage it. <clears throat> But she does, she did say on camera, but I wish she would have said to all the girls, let's just stop talking about my life. You know, like, love me from afar. If I want y'all opinion, damn it, I'll ask for it. So Quad says that she's still working on a picture perfect pup, which I'm glad she said something because I've been wondering, like, what, that, what, like, what happened to that? She says she's now working on a cookbook called Romance on the Table. Moving on, Toya, she says that she is having a lunch date with uh, Eugene, it says that she doesn't want their relationship to be like Jackie's. Drawing the comparison, and I and I wonder if y'all caught it because she was like, "Well, you know, you work all the time and all this other shit." Pretty much equating that to him being Jackie and her being Curtis. I wonder if y'all caught it. That I was like, "All right, some slick shit right there." And even still talking about um, this debt being paid off. Well, one. You part of the reason that that's there. That's number one. Number two, I'm pretty sure your Married to Medicine paycheck could have already paid for this. Now, part of me wants to believe that this is just a storyline because they really ain't got shit. Because, I mean, for what it's worth, I mean, Toy is the mess starter, you know, out of the whole group. So she really ain't got much of a storyline. So I, I don't like part of me thinks that that's what this is, but I could be wrong. Um, and. I'm not finna talk about the sex like I don't give a fuck about that. And she pretty much says for her birthday this year she wants to do like a couples cook all type thing. Moving on, Cecil and Simone. Now they had a blow up, I guess the night before, not on camera. Um, and she slept at the North House. Now Cecil says that he works in IT and that over the past two years, like they have been laying people off like every four months. So, you know, he's fighting for his job and I can see that being the case because he is older in age and I'm pretty sure a lot of these, uh, you know, companies want that young blood. So like he, so I'll come back to, I'll come back to that. So he says that and Simone says that their son texts her asking if they're getting a divorce and she even went so far as to say that in the past she would use it to get his attention but now when she uses it you know she means it now they have their issues and i think individually they have their own issues curtis being that hey i gotta make sure that i'm bringing something into this relationship financially for her i think she might be going through a midlife crisis maybe even uh i think it's menopause i'm not i'm not a fucking woman so ladies y'all get me together but I think she might be going through something because I don't want to say postpartum because I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't think she's quite, y'all know what I'm trying to say. I think that she's going through 
something and even just hearing them talk you can see that she does him wrong like like and now i'm not gonna say and pretend like caesar you know probably ain't got some shit about him we probably just don't see it but i'm not gonna sit here and pretend like them having two houses is not contributing to you know the issue and i mean real talk i mean shit if they want it's, it's, i don't necessarily think cecil has to be there with the kids granted you only know damn youngins in the house by themselves because you i think we all know what happens when you leave youngins in the house shit we all was young you know we all know what we done did but it's simple it's either you know they make time or they give a one of those fucking houses you feel what i'm saying but that right there is i can pretty much guarantee even though i'm not in a relationship is further causing that riff and the divide between the two of them what else and she pretty much says that oh and i didn't like i wrote this down it really appears like they're also having a communication problem because she even says that she doesn't like the drill sergeant approach to him but more often than not it's her getting buck with him so i don't know if it's a personality issue but i know they have a problem with communicating because neither one of them like how the other talks to them and sees the whole thing is when i talk to you i get a tone so that made me not even want to say shit to you and they celebrated their 20 year anniversary last year big old couples thing it's kind of fucked up that they kind of put themselves on that pedestal and now they sit here and they dealing with their own shit but if y'all don't watch Forrest Rock, she has said it, and I guess it stands that's the time right about now, is, like, every relationship, seven years, it's an issue. Like, it's always that number seven. And if you think about it, they have been married 20 years, which means they're in that 21st year, seven years. So that could be it, that this is the next rough patch they're, you know, having to deal with. And then, so Dr. Jackie, she's in her office. One of her assistants, Tiffany, pretty much says that I love you. So I'm going to sit here and I'm going to show you what's in the media, what's in the blogs right now. I want you to hear from somebody that actually loves you. Hear from me so you don't hear from somebody else. So you're not blindsided from somebody else. And all of the girls and the men are talking about it, which that's really starting to piss me off. Because, like, please stop using Jackie to further y'all damn storylines. But um, it was mentioned that they met in hotels, reservations, she, like she had to put the reservations in her name, but she didn't know they was married, which I'm just like, okay, you might not know he was married, but I call bullshit if you didn't know he was with somebody, because who the fuck finna sit here and tell you to constantly put the shit in your name? Like, come on now, let's be real. Um, Yeah, I'm not, <laughs> I'm just leave that where it's at. But Jack pretty much said, look, I didn't, fu I didn't, you know, one that gets breast cancer twice, that didn't get me down, this not gonna get me down. And I like how she took a moment, composed herself, shook it off and went back to work. Like, I applaud her for that. But I do feel that she needs to have that moment so that she can break. And what I mean is, for anybody that's ever lost someone, not everybody grieves right the fuck away. <laughs> Like, you have some where it takes time. You have some where, okay, I need to get away from everybody. You have others where it could be a year, two years down the line, and then all of a sudden you are succumb with emotion. I just don't want her to have that break in front of people. Like, I don't think she, I'm not saying she hasn't had it, but I don't think she really, like, had that moment where it all just hit her and she just kind of, like, let it out. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I probably am wrong. So Toya's part of Eugene and Quad are captains. Now, again, they want to sit here and talk about Dr. Jackie, and it was Quad who brought it up. Now, Greg feels that, you know, in most situations, women are quick to aid the other woman. And it seems like this time they're also aiding the mistress. And, and even with that, not getting the man side of the story. I get what he's trying to say, that in anything, everybody plays a factor in it, okay? Everybody is playing a contributing factor. Because even Dr. Eugene is like, look, I'm, I'm tired of talking about it because I ain't talked to Curtis yet. So I don't want to talk about it and I ain't talked to Curtis, which I respect that. But this should have been one of those where, hey, this is Toy's birthday party. We ain't finna talk about this right now. But they decide to talk about it. People get a little in their feelings and whatnot. Is what the fuck it is. But let's just say Quad is side-eyeing the fuck out of Dr. Greg. But 
I'ma just wait because I, I feel like they're gonna give me some. They want to give me something to say about their relationship, so I'm gonna move on. So we get introduced to Doctor Contessa, Toya's friend. She in the military. When I get more about her, I'll talk about it. The only thing that I want to mention is her and Heavily have, I guess, like their introduction, and you know, it appeared to me that Doctor Heavily was trying a different approach because she can come off quite abrasive and whatnot, and we've seen that. Like with Janice, which I wonder where the fuck is Janice. But what happened is like Dr. Contessa was like, What's your name? And she was like, Girl, you know my name and then said, What's she saying? Responds, She fucked over me already. But you can see from her face that she was fucking joking. And that rubbed out the contestant the wrong way. So the cooking commences is doctors versus non-doctors. Now Toya being messy at her own party again, she is the shit stirrer. Like with the households of Atlanta, you know you have um, what's her name? I can't think of her name. Sheree, she the bone carrier. No, Toya is the, she the shit starter and stirrer. Cause she walks up to Contessa and asks her about what happened between her and Heavily, and it's just like, why are you doing this at your own birthday party? But damn it, it's Toya. And uh, Heavily happens to walk over to that particular table, and Contessa engages her. Asks her what happened. She was like, I didn't say that, or I don't remember if I did. Cause it was one of those where she was like, it was so much happening, it was insignificant, and she was just like. I don't know if it's you instigating this, a toy, and toy about some head in her confession saying you walked over here and started shit. Unless editing was playing with us, no, the fuck she didn't. But that shit went left, and I'm glad Dr. Heavily decided, you know what, fuck it, I'm just walk the fuck away, and I got time to deal with y'all asses. Now, in the midst of the cooking, someone ain't doing shit. So she decides to, I don't know why. Go fuck with doctors, uh, well, not doctor, go fuck with Cecil. Now, she's like, come, I think she either wanted to see if he needed help or whatever, and he pretty much is like, Cecil doesn't need help, where it's just one of the words, it's like, it's, I don't know if it was like he want to deal with her going, but he pretty much said that. She felt some kind of way. I don't know if y'all caught it. She became very passive aggressive by grabbing Dr. Damon because he showed up late. But grabbing Dr. Damon and, you know, saying like how Heavenly has a good man and all this other stuff, like really boosting him up, you know, being all herked up on him and whatnot. But doing that because she wishes that Cecil could be more like Dr. Damon, but it's just like you're being passive aggressive as fuck. And, ra and it's just like rather than sit here and attack him at this woman's party, you want to sit here and throw subliminal jabs at him that she wants to cry. I, I know I probably sound heartless, but I don't give a fuck about her tears. But she starts to cry. Heavenly says that, look, the world already beats men up. You need to sit here and build him up. Then uh, Simone will talk to Jackie. They have their little talk. It is what the fuck it is. She cries it out. Come back. The non docs won. And the only thing I'm going to end this with is Toya pissed me the fuck off with the one. She said one thing that really didn't sit right with me. Because she pretty much says to her husband in front of everybody, you know, she was like, you stepping back up. I'm going to do that with a fucking sound. Like, who the fuck does that? Like, I don't think she realizes that you're going to be the reason that your relationship fails. And I said this shit uh, during my reviews last season is that what she doesn't realize is the cards are all, you know, like in the deck. Damn it, you know, your husband is playing with 48 cards more than you. And you've already showed us on camera that you won't have the kids. The most you will probably get is spousal support, but you ain't getting child support because he gonna get the kids because they've already seen how you act, starting shit, being a drunk, calling the fucking liquor mama juice or whatnot, having the kids go get the shit for you. I ain't got time. Look, that's it. That's all I got for this shit. Cause I swear if I keep going, I'm going to get fucking pissed or whatnot. Oh, and I forgot to do this. At the beginning. My B. But that's all I got. Please rate, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.